name is George Maggio, and this is uh, Luca de Moses, and uh, we're members of the Rare Fruit and Vegetable Council of Broward County. Uh, I'm going to give you a little tour of what we're doing here. Uh, we are uh, in the process of building two more raised beds. We have uh, two raised beds already. Uh, they're three foot high and uh, 15 foot long. Uh, we uh, grow our vegetables, uh, root vegetables in there, uh, plus uh, tomatoes and, uh, and our herbs. We also uh, have a, a raised a garden, uh, a, a garden that's in the ground on the other side that I'll take you over there in a minute. If you'd like to come over here and uh, take a look at the raised beds, we're in progress of, uh, we're in progress. These two raised beds have been established for about four or five years. And as you could see over to the uh, uh, right of it, uh, there's another raised bed that we're going to be uh, building in the very near future. Uh, we have the materials and everything all ready to go. Uh, all we need is uh, the help to uh, put them together and uh, get, them, get them filled up with dirt. This is our classroom here where we teach uh, classes uh, uh, on uh, layering uh, the f and grafting uh, fruit trees. Uh, we also teach classes here on uh, building the raised bed once a year. Uh, we also teach classes on planting of the vegetables and uh, proper care of the vegetables. We try to be as organic as we can, but we're very close to the Everglades, so we have a lot of pests that are come and visit us here, along with the iguanas. Uh, moving right along to our... Uh, this is our new area that we've just started to plant. Uh, this is all new this year. Uh, we have uh, in the ground uh, vegetables now, uh, which we did not have last year. Um, the uh, club saw that we did such a good job on just the two raised beds that we had last year that they appropriated money for us to uh, expand to in the ground uh, planting. We have uh, two boxes in front of me that we plant herbs in. Uh, in the back area here, we're growing uh, Swiss chard, Malabar spinach, uh, about five or six different varieties of peppers. We also have beans and pole beans and about 20 or 15 to 20 varieties of regular tomatoes and heirloom tomatoes. Um, we have along the border of the garden in containers, we have uh, Jerusalem artichokes. Uh, we still have some areas uh, that we need to plant uh, more vegetables in, but like I said, this is all new and uh, we should be very successful good Lord willing, and the bugs don't get us, uh, in uh, growing the vegetables this year. As uh, George mentioned, uh, a few months ago, <clears throat> we uh, were given the opportunity to basically more than quadruple the amount of square footage we have designated for uh, vegetables. <clears throat> what we chose to do, um, uh, because of, uh, in order to save money and try different techniques, we decided to plant uh, straight into the soil that's already here. Um, what we did initially was uh, put about four to six inches of uh, mulch on all the areas that you see here are planted with vegetables. Then on top of that, we uh, threw uh, quite a lot of uh, neem uh, fruits and uh, branches and leaves. And on top of that, we then added about another six inches to a foot of uh, topsoil with um, mulch in it, soil that's available to uh, uh, members to come and pick up. Uh, 
So we're testing to see what uh, the issue is going to be with uh, the nematodes. Uh, one of our goals uh, here at the Rare Fruit and Vegetable Council uh, Vegetable Garden is to propagate various types of uh, herbs and uh, vegetables that uh, members can come and uh, share with us or, or bring their own. Um, we uh, propagated uh, quite a few types of uh, heirloom tomatoes uh, and various types of peppers and tried to focus on things that are not readily available at uh, most nurseries. Um, the peppers that we had on sale uh, this past uh, for this past winter sale were uh, things like the uh, pigeon peppers, um, scotch bonnets, fruit cocktails, and then some of the sweet ones uh, like uh, cubanelles and uh, various types of uh, tomatoes such as the uh, Genovese, the um, brandy wine, sweet 100, homestead, San Marcino, uh, San Marcino um, Mexican cherry, malice, um, and various others that we're uh, about to start now. Um, so the idea is to make it available for uh, members to come and take uh, uh, new varieties home and uh, enjoy. Okay, welcome to the greenhouse out at the nursery here. This is where we propagate the plants and put the seeds in and get them to start to grow and get them ready to put them out to there to the cell so we don't have to purchase them and that way the group makes even more money by growing our own stuff and getting everything uh, more efficient. So if you follow me into the greenhouse, I'll show you what we've been doing lately. As you can see, this here section here has been neglected for a while. We need more members to come out and help us. And if you just pan over to this area and see how a nice little forest we got here. Uh, this is how most of it looked. And we need you know, members to come out and help us uh, clear out the weeds, clear out the dirt from the floor, and get it looking you know, properly. Some of these plants, these bigger ones here, are of a certain variety that we, we want to plant out in the nursery. They're specimen plants. Um, if you follow me, I'll show you the cocoa plant. This big tree over here is a cocoa plant, and we need to get that out planted. Once again, we need, you know, more members to come out and, you know, do as much as they can. You know, just for at least an hour, then afterwards they can have a little picnic. It's a real nice, quiet spot. You don't hear any traffic out here. So if you live in the city, then you'll appreciate coming out here once a week every you know maybe once a month even okay so this here is the misting area when we first plant the seeds or if we're doing anything um, where we just cut the clippings and put it in the soil it goes in this area here where the misters turn on I believe every 30 seconds on cue a little rainbow action going in there after the plants uh, develop a root system and they seem to get larger and sturdy enough to go out, we then move them over to these aisles over here on the top shelves and bottom shelves. And you can see they, you know, they grow weeds also. And you can't stop the weeds, so that's why we need members to come out and help us just you know, remove the weeds so the plants continue to grow. If they don't, the weeds overtake them and then they die and our efforts are in vain. If you follow me to the back here, we'll show you what the kind of the end product is supposed to look like. Okay, so this is not the final stage of what it's going to look like, but this is, you know, getting there, progressing. As you can see, the trees have been moved to the side. Uh, we're cleaning all the dirt off the floor so the older members can come out and help without worrying about, you know, getting their shoes muddy and sliding and slipping and, you know, breaking those hips, which they tend to do. <laughs> so, um... Eventually what we're going to have here is the open aisles here and a bunch of rows spaced enough where people can just reach in real quick like pull the weeds out and keep moving on. And hopefully we should have that. We believe if we can get at least five younger members, if we have younger members, uh, if they can come out and help me, we can probably get it done in three days.
My name is Ivan Debagovic and uh, I'm with the uh, Rare Fruit Council probably over 30 years and I've been uh, doing tropical and subtropical gardening also uh, probably 30 or 35 years. Uh, I have approximately I think 200 different trees. I do not know the name of some and uh, some just pop out and I let them grow. Look, uh, citrus and this is the pomelo. This year I have only one fruit. However, in the past I had a, almost up to 50, 50 fruits. Okay. This is the curry and from one little stick like this, I got all this mess here. You can see if you go inside, you can see and this a big trees and was approximately 15 years old. Clean and especially in the curry it is highly invasive. Here I'm doing experiment with guanabana because I lost two or three when they were big and soon little cold spell come around they die. I did get the fruit and this is the first year actually this one about two to three years old and I put underneath the tamarind tree and I hope that uh, the cold spell will not kill. Here we have a bananas and this particular one is the uh, miniature uh, Cavendish, small Cavendish and that's the only, this is by height that I got it okay and it does produce the fruit and I think the fruit is pretty good. This particular mango it's seedling and I find out to be the best mango there is. Uh, before one of the hurricanes I came here I didn't want to get destroyed and I cut it down and this is after four years I have here and I just hope that in a couple more years I do have a fruit. The fruit is approximately uh, just a little bit bigger than egg and it's red, uh, red green kind of red green yellow small pit but delicious to me it's one of the best this is one of my experiments building a tower okay i already harvest uh, lettuce and but i think that this is a little bit uh, too expensive i think is the uh, uh, i use too much dirt therefore i think i have to make something like a flat and then use the uh, dirt because uh, as you can see you can probably has a 4x4 four four little and you have much more than what we have here. I have a lettuce, I have a lettuce. Mm -hmm.